Leo, Aries, and Sagittarius. Okay, so they're both showing up in the upright position. And um, I'm going to say first, if you are a Cancer male and you are in a romantic situation with like um, with a, a fire or an earth sign, um, they're both in the upright position. So, you know, you get to pick and choose what you want to do. And I want to emphasize, first of all, because we have this threesome, you know, non-conducive situation for a stable relationship, and then we have two queens coming in, okay? So I just want you to be aware that, especially for cancer men who are, like, um, involved with two people at the same time, it is going to be problematic for you. And um, I do feel that there is some sense of evasiveness that you're doing here so that you don't get caught, okay? So that is something... That you should be mindful about like um you know treat others the way you want to be treated because um karma will roll around and it, it can be potentially dangerous for you okay so for those of you who are transitioning in general cancer male and female uh for those who are transitioning from like a fire sign that you're no longer um interested in and you're able to break away from it once and for all and you are transitioning from a fire sign to an earth sign. What I am sensing here is that um, the the fire sign is in the past and it, um, I, I, I believe like it was a very, um, it was a relationship in which you invested a lot of your feelings, okay? In, in which you gave your heart, in which you were like very 100% um, um, like emotionally invested and as a result of that breakdown, you were in a very, quite a dark place. However, coming forward is um, another energy, which is an earth energy. So it can be, you know, male or female, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. And what I am sensing here is this person, you're still trying to gauge things out. You're still trying to gauge their potential. And they feel a little bit more stable. And that's why you are so attracted to them. Because in the past, you're dealing with a fire and energy and fire energy are very like spontaneous whereas this earth energy is a little more your cup of tea because they um they they bring you back down to earth okay they they provide like the practicality or, or you know they provide a little bit more practicality in your life and um they provide more stability so the past relationship was very exciting but destabilizing. The present relationship itself looks, or the present love interest, looks a little more, less of a challenge and it looks more emotionally fulfilling. So either way, if there are two people in the picture, just be careful that you don't get caught because um, I do feel what is coming in is that, um, let's see, this is number seven. So what's coming in for you here is um, I do feel that if you have had like family issues, if you've had like broken homes, if you've had to move away from homes or if people, um, you know, like if you have been in divorce separations, like, um, you know, splitting up the assets, splitting up the kids type of situation, you're moving forward and you want somebody who's a little more stable, okay? You, you want like um, the long-term committed relationships, okay? So this person, this earth sign looks very, very promising and it looks very stable. And in general, earth and water, you're a water sign. So earth and water makes for a very dynamic, a very stable and a very um, emotionally fulfilling uh, type of relationship. So it looks very promising here. As for your past too, you know, you were once in this situation in which, you know, there might have been infidelity from your end or from the other person's end. And I, I'm going to guess here that a lot of you, it might have been from your end, okay? So for a lot of you, you might be like involved with multiple people in the past. And because of it, um, you are trying to shake this habit in the present situation. And we, at the same time, still have two queens coming through. So you are trying your best to not, um, you know, succumb to temptation, to try to um, be upright and right, upfront and righteous with um, whoever it is that you're dealing with. The only thing is, I do feel it is going to be quite a challenge, okay? You both have, um, you have both of these cards, the Ace of Wands, which indicates your libido, the Ace of Swords, which indicates like uh, communication, but also 
truths, revelation, and both of these things in the reverse position indicates to me that um, there's an element of like suppressing the truth. There's an element here of like keeping your temper in check and other people's temper in checks. So what I am getting is um, with the earth sign, for example, you feel that um, the earth sign is very hesitant. Okay, so earth signs are extremely cautious. They do not, um, they don't rush into relationships, until, especially earth sign women. I, I do feel that um, earth signs in general are all cautious, but earth sign women, it's sort of like not sleeping on the first date, but I do feel it's, it's not just, um, it's taking it to another st level. So it's sort of like, you know, going out on five, six, seven dates and you're still not sure where you stand with this woman. Okay, so for Cancerian men, if you are dating an earth sign, there might be a little bit of a, um, a very long courtship is in store for you because um, I do feel that it's not that she's trying to play hard to get or anything like that. She's just extra careful and um, she, she does have a very good read on people. So I do feel that if she is dragging the relationship on for that long, it's because she's not quite sure about you, okay? So it can be a he as well for women Cancerian who are looking to court an earth sign. I do feel that you've got quite some work cut out for you, okay? And um, the earth sign is very perceptive and is very aware of your intention. So for example, if you are somebody who is, tr if you are a Cancer person juggling two people, <clears throat> I'm I'm almost positive that the other people know about one another and it's not that um, it's not that you know they, they speak to one another directly or anything like that but they are aware that you are kind of like outside of that relationship okay so additionally um, I do sense here that um, you know we we're getting three people here we're getting the three of cups we're getting two queens we're getting the devil so I would strongly warn you for this month to just take it easy, okay, and um, you really have to be honest with the people that you're interacting with, that you're dealing with, mainly because um, you're not in this spread, but I do feel the other people are upfront about their intentions, okay, they're really straightforward about what it is that you want, however, you might not want the same things, I feel like you're not in alignment with them, so it's sort of like you're the water sign, or it's earth and, and fire, so but you do want to, you know, have a physical relationship with them. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you're going to have to, like, curb your communication, which means essentially, you know, lying. Which means withholding information, lying by omission, covering your bases, and also um, even, like... Um, suppressing the truth in order to get what it is that you want and then in the process of su suppressing the truth I honestly believe that um, there is going to be stall communication okay you're dealing with people who are quite perceptive and at the same time I do sense that um, these two women might be in the same social circle so hence the gossip the gossip will escalate and then you know the stall communication will come into the picture and as a result you're not going to get whatever it is that you set out to do okay so this is more of I'm, I'm sensing here like of a warning for cancerian men in general so just be um very careful about you know truthful communication and honesty okay because um you're in your birthday month, so there is a little bit of a karma, um, karmic element to events unfolding when it is around our birthday time, believe it or not. So um, it, it might be, um, it might play out in a way where, you know, it is your birthday celebration and both of these people show up and, you know, you don't know what to do because you weren't honest and upfront with them. So please be very, very careful about that. You know, protect yourself accordingly. And in general, just be faithful and truthful in all your dealings, okay? Otherwise, things can get very awkward very fast. So um, aside from that, you know, um, there is so much... 
uh, there's a lot of people here and it's all romance related. So let's see about the work situation. Um, I do feel ultimately finances in general are going to be stable the second half of the month. So in, in the first half, you are kind of like um, going about your business. It's kind of like, you know, another day at, at the old office and you're not going to mind working so much. You know, I don't feel it is going to be like um, such a I, I don't feel it's going to be a busy, busy month. But I do sense there's lack of motivation. OK, on the work front, there's lack of motivation. There's lack of um so this is basically your passion, your drive for the work environment itself is dwindling, okay? Or it's just really, really suppressed this month. So the the wands energy deals with passion, creativity as well. And your creativity is going to be curbed. At the same time, I do feel that there is a sense of um, boredom, a little bit of, well, it's not really boredom. You're, you still have enough on your plate. But I do feel like dissatisfaction in general, dissatisfaction, is going to circle its head by the end of the month on the work front. At the same time, there's also like, um, you know, losing focus in the work front as well. OK, so this card indicates to me that, um, you know, having a good this is in the in the upright position, it represents having a lot of clarity, having a lot of good information, having a lot of great ideas so that um, you are seeing kind of like um, you're seeing a game plan in the reverse position. It's sort of like um, you go to work and you you go to work and you repeat like almost the same types of work every day so it gets very monotonous it gets very repetitive and you're just like what is the end goal here so it's like losing sight of the end goal or not even having a game plan so that every day feels like the one before rather than making strides towards like an end goal you feel like you're repeating the same process and it gets very like exasperating it's frustrating to deal with um, at the same time, if you are happy with that routine type of work, I do feel that you're going to be quite happy and you're going to be content. But if you're looking for like, um, if you're looking for excitement, if you're looking for opportunities in which you want to improve your knowledge base, in which you can learn, it is going to be quite problematic. Okay. On the work front, um, I do sense that if you want to um, leave this situation, it's a good time to do it this month as well, okay? I know it is your birthday month, and um, in general, it would be beneficial for you to, um, if, you know, if you're not happy with it in any regards, I would say just leave your job because, honestly, life is too short to stick with things that are not making us happy. So um, the only problem is if you try to quit this month, another job is not going to line up for you until, like, a few months later, so that's the only thing here. If there are like gossips in your the work environment that you're not completely happy with, then, you know, just shrug it off. Um, because ultimately you are going to be able to prove yourself and you are going to like, um, you know, boost your credibility in that performance report, for example, the uh, performance appraisal. So I wouldn't worry about that too much, okay? And um, I just want to say as well in general let's see um yeah this spread is very relationship dating oriented so let's see if we can i'm going to pull, we'll pull out two more okay so in the work environment you have to be very very patient okay success is going to come and it is going to be slow in coming and i do feel that uh, we have two very good cards here that both indicate in general it's sort of telling me that um, you know wherever you go you are actually going to encounter the same problems one is that um, there's lack of drive lack of motivation secondly there's a lack of like uh, seeing an end goal okay so when situations like those happen it's because you first of all you have to to form those things on your own okay everyone it, it's sort of like um, trying to ask people you know what's the meaning of life it's going to be different for everybody involved okay so if you have to like constantly ask yourself 
what is the end goal for my job and why am I not happy? It's because you're in the wrong job to begin with or you're in the wrong relationships, okay? So if this is a recurring pattern, you have to really confront these issues within yourself and ask yourself why you feel so restless all the time. So that is going to, you know, provide that piece of the puzzle for you. And what I'm saying, I, I was trying to say earlier is that um, people have different things or different goals that they want to, to work at. So for example, for some people, they don't care what job they do as long as it pays well, because ultimately they want to buy a home or they want, you know, to retire early or they want like financial stability for themselves and their family members. So any job will do. Ideally, if they have a job that they love, then that's fine, but they don't really care what they do as long as the money's there. There are people like that, okay? So if you're working in an environment where you're just like, this job is so uninspiring, why do people stay in it? Maybe I can't stay in it, but um, so maybe there's something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just you're surrounding yourself with, you know, the wrong people, the people that are not in alignment with the way you live, the way you, the things you value, who are not in alignment with your philosophical beliefs, okay? So I hope this makes sense to you. Just because it works for, you know, the guy in the next cubicle doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So don't try so hard to fit yourself into somebody else's mold just because, um, you feel that, you know, they're successful and you try to emulate that lifestyle is not going to be, um, it, it has to be context specific. We don't have a one size fit all type of, um, mold for anything in life. Okay. So I hope that makes sense for you, for you guys. I do feel that, um, in general, going back to these two cards. Okay. If you want success, I feel that in a way you are getting a lot of success in this, um, work environment, you're getting the accolades, you're getting the reception, you're getting, you know, the, the positive feedback and reception from other people. On the financial front, I do sense that um, based on the success that you're getting financially, you should be compensated a lot more, but it's kind of stalled, okay? So promises made based on, you know, promotions or promises that were made to you about promotions, about opportunities for advancement, they're going to be stalled. All right, because people are still trying to decide where um, where everybody in the company um, fits in. OK, so you might since we have two other energies, you might be with a. Um, so, for example, there might be a promotion opportunity opening up and you are competing against like an earth sign and a fire sign. So, for example, and the management or the people higher ups are trying to decide who's the best candidate. Okay, so that's why there is stall communication because of that element between trying to choose between three people and they don't want to create bad blood. Okay, so they're just trying to find like the most diplomatic and the most civilized way to announce the winner without people like um, getting mad or getting jealous over one another. So I hope that makes sense as well. So a lot of you might be dealing with that situation on the work front. Um, so I keep digressing. So going back to what I mentioned earlier, um, on the work environment, you know, um, it is going to be what you make of it. Okay. I do feel there is opportunities for success and, um, you are quite like, um, you, you feel as if you know the ropes at this point, you know what you have to do to streamline your work processes. Okay. So a lot of you are in a good place where, you know, the workflow is very efficient at this point. I do sense a little bit of dissatisfaction in general and, um, kind of like a, a little bit of a fear about breaking away from old work structures and especially like, um, breaking away from established norms. So that's going to be difficult for you to like, um, get out, get yourself out of this work situation if you're no longer happy. Okay. So that's one thing I want to mention. It is going to be what you make of it. So you have like, um, told the power of manifestation here for you to bring in the right people and the right, um, work environments and the right job situation that you want. So in order to exercise your free will for this month, okay, I do feel that you have to be really, really, really honest with yourself, with yourself, okay, this is the, the sort of truth, and it is in the reverse position, so once again, going back to what I said, 
just because some concept works for somebody or it works for a large segment of the population doesn't mean it's going to work for you. It's sort of like I always tell people, you know, a lot of people get married and they have kids and that's like socially acceptable and that's even socially encouraged and uh, expected. But marriage is not for everybody. Child rearing is definitely not for everybody. If you are involved with people who are into that and they're kind of pushing you and you're just like, okay, I love you. Why not? Don't make these decisions lightly because you might end up in a very like, um, you know, like a very destabilizing household as a result. Okay. It's sort of like really assess what it is that you're getting yourself into and know yourself well enough to know what it is that you want and that you don't want so that you can't blame your partner for pushing you into, you know, getting married, getting pregnant and, and things like that. So a little bit of self-awareness is definitely indicated here. And, um, you know, being honest about what it is that you want, what it is that you need and being honest with people, especially on the romantic front, if you are juggling multiple people and you're trying to have your cake and eat it too it is not going to work out and it might be in a um end up in it like a little bit of an embarrassment situ like an embarrassing situation on your part okay and because the other people that are in your spread are showing up in the upright position i do feel that um once they find out they're never going to give you a second chance if you're like stepping outside of the situation or if they know that you're you know socially dating somebody else they're just not going to give you the time of day so you know just be very very honest about who it is that you want and why it is that you want this person and you know don't try to compromise your values your um your beliefs just so you can have somebody in your life that you really desire and i know that sounds like um I know that, you know, you're supposed to make compromises, but when it comes to like, um, big picture things such as, you know, having, having zero kids versus having five kids, you know, these are things that needs to be compromised, needs to like, um, be, a these are things that need to be addressed. If they are not addressed and you get yourself married and, you know, you find out that, you know, child rearing is a lot more responsibilities than they're worth, then it's going to drive the the marriage apart so you know be realistic about what it is that you want and try not to misrepresent yourself okay there's that element of putting on airs this is like putting on airs is what i'm sensing here because this is an air energy so it's sort of like um the success that you're getting and the the accolades that you're getting um I do feel that you, you are going to feel a little bit invincible and then you feel that whatever you say, people will just go along with it. But I do feel you are going to be put in a position in which you have to defend yourself and you're not going to do it well if you've been misrepresenting yourself. Okay, so that's the only danger. Well, those are the only two dangers that I am sensing for this um for this month so you know back up what you have to say and try not to um, misrepresent yourself to others because you are going to be questioned you're going to be put on the spot because um you have the queen of wands here who is quite a confrontational energy it's a fire sign you have the queen of pentacles who is um, very perceptive okay so please be very careful and um, for those who are dealing, you know, just male or female. So this could be like a king. This could also be a king. So, you know, king or queens of the fire ele elements who are very confrontational. And then kings and queens of the um, pentacles element who are very, very loving, who are very trusting. But um, they are very perceptive. So, you know, they, they it's almost like they have a sixth sense about them as well.